Hi, I'm Lee, and welcome to my studio and YouTube channel where I discuss tips, tricks, and techniques for oil and acrylic painters. Let's explore five paints in the red family. Okay, so let's look at these single pigment uh, red family paints. Uh, we have uh, warm colors, cool colors, and we have a, an earth tone in this uh, in this family. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, but let's, so let's start off with cadmium red light. A similar pigment uh, to cadmium red light, which is naphthol scarlet. We have uh, uh, permanent rose, which is a quinacridone. Alizarin permanent. We don't want to use alizarin because alizarin is light fast. We don't want our paints to fade on us. And then we have transparent red iron oxide, which is an earth color, um, but an earth tone. But it's uh, definitely something we should take a look at uh, within the the red family. Let's have some fun. Okay, so let's take a look at our reds. Over here we have our warm reds. We have our cool reds, transparent iron oxide. We're going to uh, take these and we're going to do tents, just mix with titanium white. And then uh, all these correlate exactly to over here. And we're just going to, uh, we're just going to draw down and we're going to get some transparencies to see how they look in glazes and whatnot. First up on our red uh, exploration, let's look at cadmium red light. As we start to mix it up, we can see it's a it's a very orange red. It has a nice um, nice color to it. Yeah, there we go. Sort of a staple in a, in a uh, split primary. Um, it's really nice. Yeah, it's a really nice color. And as we draw it out, you can actually see how how absolutely beautiful this color is. It's really nice. All right, let's move on. So this is naphthol red, or naphthol scarlet. Naphthol scarlet is uh, uh, very similar to cadmium, uh, but uh, let's get into it and uh, see how it compares to cadmium red light. All right, so now we can see it's a little bit redder than the cadmium. Doesn't get quite so yellow, but it's very similar. Um, yeah, here we go. It's yeah, very similar to the to the cadmium red light there. This is really nice if you have uh, concerns about using cadmium uh, cadmium colors. Um, the nice thing about this is um, is it's not as toxic as this, but it's only cadmium is only toxic if you if you ingest it or get in your skin or, or, or you know if you have a cut or whatnot so obviously don't eat your paints and don't uh, don't apply them to your wounds you should be okay <laughs> so still it's nice to have an alternative if, if you're you know particularly concerned about it um, it's a little bit redder than uh, cadmium let's move on to the next one which is uh, quinacridone quinacridone uh, is a very high tinting uh, very saturated but as soon as we get into it you'll see uh, here in a minute that it's a uh, uh, completely different color yeah, here we go. Look how, yeah, look how much cooler and, um, yeah, this is nice and, and uh, this would be great for split primary with uh, with one of these guys where you have a warm red and a cool red um, to work with to, to get your, um, work within your uh, a palette of, of cool and a reds. Um, yeah, this is a really nice color. It's very rosy. Yeah, perfect for flowers. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a really nice florally color. Not nearly as yellow as these guys over here. Um, yeah, real nice, uh, nice color. Okay, so let's move on to permanent alizarin. Permanent alizarin is a completely different pigment than alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson actually has been shown to be fugitive. It fades over time and, and uh, changes. Uh, we typically don't want that in your paints. So uh, manufacturers started working with uh, new pigments and uh, we're gonna check this guy out now. So let's check him out. Okay, so as we get into it, you can see it's a, it's a lot more saturated than alizarin crimson, um, traditional. Um, but it's it's uh, it still has a nice uh, nice color to it. Uh, it'd be great for blushes uh, or lipstick. 
start to see that this is a little darker value than these. Um, all of them. Yeah, it's a little bit darker value. So you wanna make sure that um, use a little less, or a little more titanium white when you, if you're trying to get, maintain a, a value structure that's similar across the board. Yeah, I like how it's not as, yeah, not quite as stark as the quinacridone. Um, it's, 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 it's cool without being so cold, it's, it's going, going toward pink. Still a nice, uh, a red color, a cool red. Um, yep, permanent alizarin. All right, and last but not least, let's look at transparent red iron oxide. Um, this color is a very, um, uh, it's an earth tone. It's an earth, uh, earth uh, synthetic earth pigment. But um, as we get into it, you'll see how uh, it can be useful for um, uh, flesh tones. And, uh, but you could also use it for, uh, especially here in, in, in Arizona, the uh, Southwest, we have uh, Sedona, Monument Valley. We have some um, really red rocks here. And so <laughs> it's, uh, those works out really well for those, uh, for those environments. Um, starts out super saturated, uh, but you can knock it back with the, with its opposite, a little bit of green and, um, makes for a really, really beautiful color that you can utilize, um, for many applications. And it's a, it's a, it's an earth tone, but it's a red, it's a, it's a nice deep red. I mean, but, you know, but by comparison, it looks almost brown, but once we start, uh, once we really start looking into the, uh, the transparencies over there, we'll start uh, really start to see it shine as a as this transparent red iron oxide really shows it's uh, what it's capable of. Okay, so let's set aside our tints and start looking at our transparencies. Uh, the first one up is cadmium red light. Cadmium red light is uh, it's opaque paint, and so it should be interesting to see how uh, when we begin playing with it and we draw it down uh, what we see. So let's get started on this and. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, as an opaque paint, it doesn't work with you much on transparencies, which which makes sense. Um, you don't see much value change between the pile and the and the bottom here. Yeah, let's wipe this off and see if we can't get a little bit of scumbling in here. Here we go. Yeah, we really have to work at it. It's just. Uh, really dig into it yeah so there's still you can still work with it a little bit but there's there's probably definitely better alternatives to uh Kevin red light when you want to do some uh transparencies okay so next up we have uh naphthol scarlet pull down this real quick yeah naphthol scarlet is as a as a uh, an alternative or substitute for your cadmium red light you're going to have a lot of a lot of similarities and properties here yeah you can see the the two slightly darker not by much but um yeah pull it up a little bit more yeah let's scumble this out a little bit yep here we go yeah it behaves very similarly so um as you can tell make a great uh, great alternative to the uh, the cadmium if you want to work um opaquely yeah, there we go. That's all scarlet. Let's move over to our transparents. This should be uh, behave quite differently than our opaques. Um, our first one up is going to be uh, quinacridone rose or permanent rose. Uh, let's take a look at that. Yeah, already you can see the value change between the pile and the, the transparency down here. Yeah, you can really start to see it. Start to really start to see a glow, and you can see yeah. And look how transparent this is by comparison, but yeah, let me wipe this off and get, uh, uh, yeah, let's start really pulling this out a bit. Yeah, you can get real thin with it, and you can definitely see how much of a difference this is, how, be how the behavior is with it. Yeah, that's a really nice, makes for great glazes, um, really nice color for, for that. Yeah, let's play with this a little bit more down here. And yeah, you just see how much of transparent this is, how transparent this is. Yeah, like by compare here to the Scarlet, you can see a substantial difference in behavior. Um, you know, which I expected, it's transparent. So well, let's move on to our next pigment, which is Permanent Rose. 
or I mean permanent alizarin. Uh, permanent alizarin as we draw it down will all behave very similarly as a transparent color. And yeah, again, you see the difference between the, yeah, this is almost a ruby color. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice color. I really like this color. Close up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you start to see the, the potential behind it. It's a real nice, uh, nice thin. Yeah, it works really well, nice here, nice and nice and thin, uh, nice glaze. All right, so let's move on to transparent red iron oxide. This guy right here is a little brown again, but as you as you look at it all, you should let's let's see how it does when we when we actually draw down. Look how dark it is, and then. Boom, yeah, it's super light. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It, it almost, yeah. Yeah, this is a really nice glazing, uh, transparent color. This is great for, uh, like I said, the desert Southwest <laughs> with the red. Um, yeah, let's pull this out a little bit more so you can see it. Oh man, look at that. Yeah, it's a really nice color. Yeah, pull this down a little bit more. You can see the this nice rusty red. Yeah, so if you look over, if you look over here. You can see that it's uh, it's far more brown, uh, but over here it's super red. It's really nice. Yeah, these are all some uh, really nice reds. Absolutely beautiful reds. So thanks for exploring the, uh, the f red family with me, and I'll see you in the next video.